<laughs> oh my goodness. This is... hmm. Chris Lee and Blake Lovell here of Southeastern 14. Folks, just let me just tell you, like it, you guys, if you've subscribed to the channel, you know we record all these videos. Like, you know, we try to get everything recorded, get it all up for you guys pretty quick. Total comedy of errors um, on Monday morning. So just that's if you wonder why we're laughing coming on, like it's just been a total debacle uh, in, in every way, shape or form. So there we go. Well, it was a debacle for Vanderbilt last Look time. Look at out. that. What a segue. Wow. 55-3 at Alabama. Commodores coming off a bye week. Hosting Ole Miss kickoff time. Four Eastern, this one in Nashville. I, I don't think home field will be much of an advantage for Vanderbilt. Ole Miss has a ton of alums in Nashville, and will travel well to that one. Ole Miss coming off a huge win over Kentucky. Ole Miss made plays when it needed to. Ole Miss ran the ball well. I'm looking at this one, Blake. Uh, Ole Miss about a 20-point favorite with an over-under of around 60, depending on where you're seeing this. Ole Miss just a very versatile offense. Um, coming to Nashville uh, on a little bit of a high note, Rebels will have to check themselves a little bit, I guess, um, after a big win against a team that is heavily favored against. Vandy made this one closer than it should have, though, in Oxford a year ago, uh, which is maybe a little bit of a warning to Ole Miss. Yeah, it's um... – you know, we, again, we always talk about the hangover effect after a big game, and that was just a huge game. Uh, Ole Miss, Kentucky, and just a big, you know, emotional win, all those big plays in the game, and now you hit the road for, let's face it, for another home game. Um, not to the extent that you had last week, but there's going to be a lot of Ole Miss fans in the stands. We, we know that. Um, and, you know, I think this is one of those games that statistically you look at it, Chris. I mean, I, I think Vanderbilt edges – Ole Miss and penalties beyond that, you know, statistically, there's not a lot of things at this point that probably stand out as advantages for Vanderbilt against Ole Miss. Um, yeah, I'm sure you could pick apart a couple of things somewhere, but so, so, I mean, that's what you have to go on. Um, but like you said, I think there is something to the fact and I'll give you some of my, um, again, I love covers cause they have so many of these great little stats about, uh, you know, spreads and trends in the series and all that. And I'll give you some of those in just a few, but this is one that, you know, if you just look at the matchup, like you feel like Ole Miss could just run the ball here and run the ball and run the ball and put up a lot of points. Um, but there's actually a suggestion with some of the the recent trends that that may not be the case. But we'll talk about that in a minute. OK, when Ole Miss has got the ball, Rebels scoring 41 a game, Vanderbilt giving up 33.8 adjusted for sacks. Ole Miss throwing 7.6 per attempt, Vanderbilt giving up the same adjusted for sacks, rushing adjusted for sacks. Ole Miss 5.7 to carry. Vanderbilt giving up 5.0. Um, Vanderbilt is weaker against the pass, but has been vulnerable to the run, too. I think that Ole Miss just will have better athletes in the trenches. It'll have better speed. It'll have a power running game. I think this will be a pick your poison if you're Lane Kiffin. If Ole Miss avoids penalties and turnovers, uh, I think it can be very balancing against Vanderbilt and have success both ways. The Commodores under Clark Lee are going to get better. He's a defensive-minded coach. Vanderbilt just does not have the overall team speed, and it does not have a pass rush. And against a team like this, against a, really any team in the SEC, that's going to be problematic. But against a balanced team, um, you know, unless Ole Miss gets behind the chains – uh, that that's probably going to be a lot of trouble for Vanderbilt. I just don't see the Commodores getting a lot of stops here. Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, if you just look at it from that standpoint, because like we said, Ole Miss has easily transformed itself. One of the best rushing attacks in the country. Um, you know, passing game hasn't had to be perfect when they've had a running game that I don't want to say has been perfect, but it's been <laughs> flawless at times in terms of all the different people they have to run the ball. We talked about Judkins and what he can do. Um, you know, last week was another example of that, of course, Evans has done it before this season too. They've just got so many, um, different guys that can just make those big plays, just pound and pound the, the, the ball and just run it down your throat. And I think that is something that they will certainly, um, have an opportunity to do here. But like you said, even if they don't, Vanderbilt's passing defense has not been great. So, um, balance is a good word. I think Ole Miss could probably slice and dice, 
any way you look at it here, uh, when you just look at the stats. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it, it is what it is. I think Ole Miss clearly has a, a big advantage in terms of what they've done offensively to this point this season. There are seven games in the SEC this week. We'll be ma making picks on all those in the Stakes app. That is S-T-A-K-E-S. -E we want to see if you guys agree or disagree with our picks. You can go to playwithstakes.com forward slash 14. Again, that's S-T-A-K-E-S. -E Sign up for Stakes. Make your predictions for or against our guesses. If you use the invite code Southeastern14 when you sign up, you'll get a double welcome bonus. Free to join free to play you can earn tokens which can get you nfts so you can play for fun it costs you nothing you can win stuff hey, nothing to lose there support our sponsor stakes join us in the app have some fun you'll thank us later okay when vandy's got the ball commodores have made a switch to aj swan it's starting quarterback kids got a cannon of an arm He's got some weapons. Will Shepard is one of the best receivers in the conference. Jaden McGowan, speedster in the slot. Um, Vanderbilt will probably try to go balance too, although losing Mike Wright or not having Mike Wright takes away sort of a running dynamic. Um, but Ole Miss defensively, Blake, pretty good. Ole Miss averaging 11 points a game. Vanderbilt scoring 34.2. If you adjust for sacks, um, Vanderbilt per pass play, I think 7.2 yards and running for 5.0. Ole Miss giving up 5.3, I think, per pass and 3.2 per rush. So Rebels have been pretty stout on either side of the ball, Blake. Yeah, uh, they have. And, and that's what we talked about the Ole Miss defense. And that was going to be the big thing, I think, coming into the season. We knew there was going to be questions regarding who would be the quarterback, but we also looked at that defense and said, how are they going to continue to evolve? And they have. Um, they've done a lot of good things this season. And again, you kind of go back to even just the, the bigger plays in that Kentucky game, you know, making some of those, those big kind of plays. And I think you just look for Vanderbilt. It's seeing what AJ Swan can do here. We talked about it. I mean, my goodness, what, what can you, your first sec games on the road against Alabama, the expectations are not high. Now you come back to Nashville, um, go up against an Ole Miss defense that has been, like I said, really good at times. Um, and knowing that you're probably going to have to score some points, I think, to keep up with Ole Miss. I think it's just, you know, I think for Vanderbilt, it's just continuing to see kind of the evolution of, of him under center and especially against these SEC defenses and what they can do there. And so um, I think that's about all you can kind of aim for here because, again, I think clearly Ole Miss's defense line play is just huge, as we know, in the SEC, getting a pass rush, all those things. And I'm just curious to see what Swan looks like against this Ole Miss defense, because again, first sample size in SEC play on the road against Bama, it's hard to take a lot away from that. Yeah, actually, let me correct those numbers. Adjusted for sacks, Vanderbilt averaging 6.7 a pass, Ole Miss giving up just 4.8 per pass play. Uh, Vanderbilt rushing for 5.4, Ole Miss giving up 4.1. Again, that's taking out sacks. So Ole Miss, I just think, is, is too big, fast, and strong. The spread on this one is around 20, over under a 60. That implies a 40 to 20 Ole Miss final. Frankly, I think Ole Miss gets more than 40 in this one, and I'm not sure Vanderbilt gets to 20 unless it shows out a lot better than it did against Alabama. All right, some of my favorite trends here, Chris. I'm going to start adding these in. I just I love these. And, again, you can take them for what they're worth because there are a lot of trends, right, like betting trends and stuff. But here's some fun ones you, you have to work with. Ole Miss in their last seven SEC games, the under has hit all seven times. There's, Goodness. Okay. So, so keep that in mind. So dating back to last year, um, that is certainly interesting. The under 11 and one for Ole Miss the past 12 games following a straight up win. So a lot of unders we've seen over the past, you know, last half of last season, this season. Vanderbilt, meanwhile, five and zero against the spread in their last five games following a straight up loss. So, Something else mm. where it's like, okay, maybe they haven't bounced back and won, but they have been able to to cover for all of uh, you folks out there who like to, to make those bets. Um, the favorite four and one against the spread, though, in the past five meetings. So a lot of these kind of, you know, kind of gel together. You kind of got to take your, your pick here. But if you look at the trends, the under seems like a great pick uh, with this one, mm. um, at least from, from Ole Miss's standpoint, when you look at just, it's, it's remarkable to think about that, right? But I think that shows you kind of the, the improvement of the defense, right? The defense has gotten to the point mm -hmm. to where 
they're winning these games and, and their defense has been able to hold people down. So maybe that's something to, to certainly look at here. And maybe you look at a chance that Vanderbilt may be able to cover this. But Chris, I just I know the numbers are what they are in terms of the trends, but I just feel like this could be one, though. If you look at what Ole Miss can do and, and what maybe Vanderbilt will be able to do against that Ole Miss defense, that's that's the concern here. Obviously, I'm going to pick Ole Miss to win. A tricky game, though, when you look at some of those kind of recent trends in terms of the betting odds. So here's another problem for Vanderbilt. Ole Miss has got 16 sacks. That's yeah. I think this is one of those games where Ole Miss could score defensively. You know what I mean? And I think that's yeah. that becomes an even bigger issue. So yeah, I you know, that number, what'd you say? It's like it's around 20 now. Like I've seen it some places moving down. So that may be one of those things too where that number keeps pushing down. You're gonna see a lot of people jump on Ole Miss, but as we always say there's a reason for that. Um, so we'll see. This, this is a hard game to pick from from that standpoint, but yeah. Um some of those, like I said, some of those betting trends are kind of fascinating with the under and for Vanderbilt covering uh, in their last five games following a loss. All right. We are previewing every single SEC game this week. We're previewing every single SEC football game this year, and, and we'll do it for basketball too. Best way to get them all, hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Stakes. We'll see you again soon.